The Second Barbary War 1815 was fought between the United States and the North African Barbary Coast states of Tripoli, Tunis, and Ottoman Algeria. The war ended when the United States Senate ratified Commodore Stephen Decatur's Algerian Treaty on December 5, 1815. However, De Omar Aga of Algeria repudiated the U.S. treaty, refused to accept the terms of peace that had been ratified by the Congress of Vienna, and threatened the lives of all Christian inhabitants of Algiers. William Shaler was the U.S. commissioner in Algiers who had negotiated alongside Decatur, but he had to flee aboard British vessels and watch rockets and cannon shot fly over his house, like hail, during the bombardment of Algiers 1816. He negotiated a new treaty in 1816 which was not ratified by the Senate until February 11, 1822 because of an oversight. After the end of the war, the United States and European nations stopped paying tribute to the pirate states. This marked the beginning of the end of piracy in that region, which had been rampant in the days of Ottoman domination during the 16th-18th centuries. The Western nations built ever more sophisticated and expensive ships which the Barbary pirates could not match in numbers or technology. Topic. Background The First Barbary War 1801 had led to an uneasy truce between the U.S. and the Barbary states, but American attention turned to Britain and the War of 1812. The Barbary pirates took the opportunity to return to their practice of attacking American and European merchant vessels in the Mediterranean Sea and holding the crews for ransom. At the same time, the major European powers were still involved in the Napoleonic Wars, which did not fully end until 1815. At the conclusion of the War of 1812, however, the United States returned to the problem of Barbary piracy. On 3 March 1815, the United States Congress authorized deployment of naval power against Algiers, and the squadron under the command of Commodore Stephen Decatur set sail on 20 May. It consisted of USS Guerrier Flagship, Constellation, Macedonia, Epervier, Ontario, Firefly, Spark, Flambeau, Torch, and Spitfire. Shortly after departing Gibraltar en route to Algiers, Decatur's squadron encountered the Algerian flagship Meshuda and captured it in the Battle off Cape Gata, and they captured the Algerian brig Estadio in the Battle off Cape Palos. By the final week of June, the squadron had reached Algiers and had initiated negotiations with the day. The United States made persistent demands for compensation, mingled with threats of destruction, and the day capitulated. He signed a treaty aboard the Guerrier in the Bay of Algiers on 3 July 1815, in which Decatur agreed to return the captured Meshuda and Estadio. The Algerians returned all American captives, estimated to be about 10, in exchange for about 500 subjects of the day. Algeria also paid $10,000 for seized shipping. The treaty guaranteed no further tributes by the United States and granted the United States full shipping rights in the Mediterranean Sea. Aftermath In early 1816, Britain undertook a diplomatic mission, backed by a small squadron of ships of the line, to Tunis, Tripoli, and Algiers to convince the Days to stop their piracy and free enslaved European Christians. The bays of Tunis and Tripoli agreed without any resistance, but the day of Algiers was more recalcitrant, and the negotiations were stormy. The leader of the diplomatic mission, Edward Pellew, 1st Viscount Exmouth, believed that he had negotiated a treaty to stop the slavery of Christians and returned to England. However, just after the treaty was signed, Algerian troops massacred 200 Corsican, Sicilian and Sardinian fishermen who had been classified as under British protection. This caused outrage in Britain and Europe, and Exmouth's negotiations were seen as a failure. As a result, Exmouth was ordered to sea again to complete the job and punish the Algerians. He gathered a squadron of five ships of the line, reinforced by a number of frigates, later reinforced by a flotilla of six Dutch ships. On 27 August 1816, following a round of failed negotiations, the fleet delivered a punishing nine-hour bombardment of Algiers. The attack immobilized many of the day's corsairs and shore batteries, forcing him to accept a peace offer of the same terms as he had rejected the day before. Exmouth warned that if these terms were not accepted, he would continue the action. The day accepted the terms, but Exmouth had been bluffing, his fleet had already spent all its ammunition, a treaty was signed on 24 September 1816. 
The British consul and 1,083 other Christian slaves were freed, and the U.S. ransom money repaid. After the First Barbary War, the European nations had been engaged in warfare with one another and the U.S. with the British. However, in the years immediately following the Second Barbary War, there was no general European war. This allowed the Europeans to build up their resources and challenge Barbary power in the Mediterranean without distraction. Over the following century, Algiers and Tunis were colonized by France in 1830 and 1881, respectively. In 1835, Tripoli returned to the control of the Ottoman Empire. In 1911, taking advantage of the power vacuum left by the fading Ottoman Empire, Italy assumed control of Tripoli. Europeans remained in control of colonial governments in eastern North Africa until the mid-20th century. By then the iron-clad warships of the late 19th century and dreadnoughts of the early 20th century ensured European dominance of the Mediterranean Sea. See also Bombardment of Algiers 1816. Military history of the United States Barbary Treaties U.S. President James Madison 2011 military intervention in Libya, termed Third Barbary War, by media. First Barbary War. Topic further reading Toll, Ian W. March 17, 2008. Six Frigates, The Epic History of the Founding of the U.S. Navy. W. W. Norton and Company. ISBN 978-0393330328.